Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Welcome back to another episode of No Waco. This is your host, Debbie. Welcome back to another episode of No Waco. I'm your host, Debbie, and today we have some very special guests here in the studio. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Well, thank you for having us, Debbie. I'm Melissa Pardon. Oh, and I'm uh, Julian Rosas. <laughs> yeah, we're here for uh, to represent Maker's Edge, Makerspace, which is a makerspace, a collaborative DIY uh, space here in Waco, Texas. All right, amazing. Thank you guys so much for coming on today. We're so excited to have you here on the 21st floor of the Alico building. Yes. Um, one of the first questions I ask my guests anytime they're new on the podcast is what brought you to Waco or what is your Waco journey? Ours is a long one. Uh, Because I'm older than him. But uh, (laughs) so my husband and I got married uh, New Year's Eve of 95. Mm -hmm. And we we, uh, moved to Waco the next week. Wow. And we've been here ever since. We thought we would be in Waco for two years. I was... Got a full ride to Baylor for my grad school. And thought we'd be here two years. Mm -hmm. Kind of establish ourselves. And then, you know... Like couples do, move on. And then we ended up just falling in love with Aww. Waco. Fell in love with Waco. The people, the the place, the community, the churches, the just the environment here is so much different than where we came from and um, just loved it. And so we decided to stay. Yay. Well, we're so glad you're here. Thanks. And you, Julian. So um, I am a Waco native. I uh, born and raised, everything. Um, I... I uh, did leave Waco for a little bit to go get my degree in studio art, and then I came back. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, I the main thing that as a Waco native that I love is, of course, our, our, our culture and history, a lot of the history that a lot of people don't really realize that Waco has, and there's a lot more that we're known for. Like, if, for example, the suspension bridge is one was one of the first in I think our nation mm-hmm. that was actually built. People, you know, always think, oh, suspension bridge. Oh, we're thinking Golden Gate Bridge and all that, mm-hmm. right? Nope we we were one one of the first, I believe. Yeah, uh, and so it's it's history points like that that real I really am proud of as a local Wacoan, and just as Melissa said, the people, every all the places that we have here. You know, we're not we're not big like Dallas or Houston, mm-hmm. but we do have our own share of, of uh, novelties, I, I should say. I love that. And that's absolutely amazing. And we're so glad you're here today. Um, and we're Thank so you. glad that Maker's Edge is here. Thank so you. Um, I know you already explained a little bit, but tell me all about it and give me the who, the what and the when and <laughs> how we can find out more about you. Sure. So Maker's Edge, like I said, is a makerspace, which is really just a fancy way of saying a collaborative workspace. I explain it to be a nerd for a gym for nerds. <laughs> Um, so you pay a membership fee, you get to participate as much as you want in a space for that one simple fee a month. Um, but we don't require any exercise. So, uh, Good. we have <laughs> wood shop tools, metal shop tools. We deal or focus mainly now on electronics, uh, small pro- projects. Pottery is a big one right Ooh. now. We have been trying to expand our jewelry and metal smithing area and wow. then also putting focus on more of our digital fabrication yes. as well. And, uh, and the, the one thing that, you know, people, when we ask them if they come in for a tour, you know, have you heard of a makerspace before? Just cause that's a, a, a term that's not really passed around in, mm-hmm. you know, common conversation. I use the way I usually explain to people, cause they, sometimes we get asked, well, are y'all, you know, are y'all a chain? Do y'all have other mm-hmm. locations? Makerspace from my experience and Melissa may agree with me is that, um, that term in general, it's, it's a very general term, kind of like grocery store. Yeah. But we are our own entity and each makerspace that you will find in different cities, communities, they all aim to serve based on what the need is of, of, of what people want. Yeah. So we have a variety of different things, but that's, we've developed that over the past 
Nine, nine years? It's been nine years. <laughs> wow. Nine years. <clears throat> and to, based on what people have, you know, told us, what we feel that based on, you know, tools that we feel people could get a lot of use out of. Yeah. Yeah. So a makerspace in general, I could make this an hour and a half long podcast <laughs> if I went back, cause I can talk forever, but uh, a makerspace has only been ra- around as a concept for about 20, 30 years. Wow. And in general, they were all nonprofit, mm-hmm. um, either started by the government mm-hmm. or started by educational centers, colleges, or um, a bunch of people got together, like started, a, yes, yeah. started a nonprofit, and they just kind of used the tools collaboratively. Um, we are one of the very few mom and pop shops, independently mm-hmm. owned and operated. Um, we chose that for a particular reason. We just thought it was the best way to ensure that the tools were properly working and maintained, that it was staffed, that we could do education the way we wanted to do, uh, that we could provide mentors uh, for the people who came into the space. And then that we we could really um, utilize the expertise that we have in the community. What we we believe in our hearts is the more interdisciplinary that people are in their making, the better everyone gets. I love and that. so we just have a space where we love to share with people who maybe we don't know two hoots about what they're doing, <laughs> um, but we certainly have something we can share and we certainly have something we can learn. I love that. And we're here today because you guys just um, got into a bigger space. You yes. guys are moving and then we have summer camps coming up. Yeah. Um, so tell me about some of those things. Yeah, so we did just move locations. We spent eight years over on 18th Avenue, but we are now co-located with Triple Win over on Webster Avenue and 12th in that area. And um, we're very excited. It gives us a much more expanded capacity. You know, what Julian was alluding to earlier is that we have con- we are membership driven. Mm-hmm. And so we started with an idea of what people would want. But every six months to 12 months, we evaluate Uh, What tools are working? What are not? What do we need to get rid of? Mm -hmm. What do people want us to expand into? Pottery was not a thing. I'm excited about pottery. um, I'm going to have to borrow your kiln. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But we had no pottery to start with. Um, And we focused a lot on 3D printing. And what we've seen over the years is 3D printing has kind of stepped out. Stepped out. And we now do a lot of CNC work in pottery. So it's always evolving based on what the people want. So, but we are now co-located with, co-located with Triple Win. It allows us to do a lot more of um, commission work, mm-hmm. a lot more of business integration, and um, member, member-driven projects and business startups is really yes. kind of... So that's more of my husband's side. He's, <laughs> he's the engineer of this uh, part. And uh, my passion is really on the education side for the students and doing the STEM work. Every summer we've had um, summer camps Mm -hmm. uh, that are STEM driven. And it used to be we would do eight camps Mm -hmm. and every camp focused on a different portion of the space. So that if you attended all of them, you would know you touched every tool in the space. Um, We have honed that down a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Um, a lot of kids are not interested in word wicking these days, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, so this summer, we're really focusing in on electronics, microcontrollers, coding, robotics, that sort of thing. Even things- to some basic engineering as well. Wow. Yes. yes. And um, because I, I think that's really what where people are at right now is they're really interested in learning how can I have come with up with an idea of something I want to mm-hmm. do and then how do I take that to completion Kids think that way, too. I love that. And you guys have a whole list of camps that you get yes, brought. Yes. So um, tell me tell me about when they are, how we can sign up, how so our kids can get involved. the first camp that we will be starting with in June. It's not, uh, I believe, so, uh, June. The second week of June. Second, yeah. second week of June. Second week of June is <laughs> our MakerBot Battle Camp. And that Ooh. one was the last camp we did last year. That one, I would say, was probably one of our most it successful. It was, um, and it was one of the most fantastical. <laughs> um, we had never Absolutely done it before. Crazy. My husband's a huge fan of BattleBots on TV, mm-hmm. you know, and it's always wanted to do that. I've watched the competitions that. before. Uh, we watched... We've watched it multiple times <laughs> in my we house. Would, <laughs> last year, the, um, our, our camp staff, they would put on the battle bots videos for the <laughs> yes. kids to watch. They really get them I love inspired. that. I love that. Oh, when the, the week, the, the end of the week came and we actually did our competition where the kids put their um, bots in the arena. They were all in. Yeah, so we <laughs> built a glass encased arena wow. that has real uh, contraptions on the floor to kind of... Wow. Uh, 
things that they have to get by, but it is a battle. So we have different teams during the camp week and they collaborate on how to do their robot. Mm -hmm. Although I will say every camper goes home with their own battle bot at the end and then they battle. Wow. And and we do that part so way through. So sometimes they take home pieces. No, okay. <laughs> but, but his point on the engineering is we're trying to teach basic concepts of entry to engineering, yeah. the ideation to completion of an idea. Mm-hmm. And so we give them halfway through the camp uh, and the ability to what did or didn't work on their battle bot, yeah. go back, do redesigns, and try again for I the final that. competition. Every camp, we, we are non traditional in this sense. <laughs> uh, every camp has a competition. There's mm-hmm. a winner and a loser. Okay. There are prizes. It is um, it is uh, getting back to sort of the grassroots of what it means to be, uh, we, we say at our place, we are not afraid to fail because failure teaches us how to win. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're just constantly evolving, even in our camps and helping kids. I I chew out my interns and teachers. <laughs> we do not do things for students. Yeah. We allow them to fail on their own and then help them to succeed. I love that. And um, because kids, it's so interesting when um, any kid, in, any kid in our space is capable of touching every tool in the space. You just have to be more careful. Mm-hmm. You can be more supervised with them. You have to take a lot, a little bit longer to educate mm-hmm. and you have to have a lot more guidance. Yeah. But if you create the right pr- parameters, we've had camps in the past where we've welded with kids, wow. where we've done woodworking with kids. Um, kids are capable if you require them to rise to the occasion. Yeah. I absolutely love that. And that's amazing. Um, and then you guys have a superhero training camp. We do. Yes. That's the next and one. That, and that one I, f- I feel one. there's a lot of potential to that one. I I feel could delve into almost a lot of different points in STEM. You mm-hmm. could delve into robotics and, and you, when they're making gadgets or chemistry, all of all of that. Yeah, it's more for our creative side of makers mm-hmm. um, because we also take them through the creative side of creating your own superhero. Wow! From the name to the costume to the what kind of powers it has, and then trying to figure out what kind of gadgets you want to make for your I superhero. And then in the end, we have. Every camp has a contest. (laughs) And so, um, you know, we just we so it is geared more towards those kids who have sort of the creative side of of their brain going on. I love that. I want my own superhero. I know. Right. (laughs) Who does it? Hello. Um, And then, of course, coding and everything like you guys were saying before. The crazy coder camp we've done in the past uh, several times, actually. Yeah. And that one, um, it introduces kids to, uh, I believe, what's called block coding mm-hmm. yeah uh, we use scratch uh, <clears throat> program to do that and uh the kids learn the basics to okay this is how uh what you do when you put these two blocks together and uh this is what the computer will read and then from there their main project throughout the week was to uh create a computer game and then the competition was they try to see if they could beat each other's beat games. Each other's games. And then that. the games are set up in such a way that they get to take the games home with them because they function Aww. on cell phones. Yeah. You know, it's an app, it's an app driven uh, program base. Uh, what I love about all our camps is, um, you know, a lot of places you go when they teach these things, uh, I'll air quote, when they teach these things, what they're really doing is just telling kids how to do it. But they really don't start at the basics as to why these things work. Mm -hmm. In our coding camp, for instance, we go back to dots, you know, ones and ones Ones and zeros. zeros. We start at the very beginning and then we talk about circuitry and why things have to flow in a certain path, why things have to be set up a certain way. And then we actually do a little bit of soldering to explain the process of that circuitry and why it works and why it's not dangerous for you and, you know, that sort of thing. And then, you know, we take that out because I think the more, or at least it was true for me, uh, the more I understand why things work, the more I feel I can engage and continue on with what I'm doing. I love that. Well, if you guys need some volunteers, ah, sign me there up. There you go. I'll be, always, I'll be by there By the helping. way, we always need volunteers. <laughs> always. Um, well, that's amazing. So um, with that, of course, you guys are a membership. Um, how much do you guys do your memberships for? How much your camp? Um, where can people find out how to um, get signed up? All the fun things. That is 
Julian on the social media. <laughs> okay, so I guess I can't go over here. Um, as far as summer camps go, um, the camps themselves are registered through MCC's continuing ed program. Um, you, if you go on to any of our social media pages and go to the website link that's listed there or on any of the posts that we put out, the link that's listed with them, just follow that link and you will see a tab that says um, Maker's Edge Summer Camp Sign Up. And so you'll just click that. You'll pick the camp that you want and reserve your spot. And one uh, bonus that I would love to mention is um, we have a special uh, maker summer bundle going on. So if a parent signs their kid up for a summer camp, they get to pick one month between June, July, and August to um, have one free membership with their child. Wow. So we get they get one adult and one youth membership. And so then that way, if the kid finds a project that they would like to maybe continue working mm-hmm. on or maybe explore uh, a certain field of STEM mm-hmm. even further, or if they just have a fun project they want to do, then they can continue doing so outside of camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love that. That's amazing. Um, with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. All right. And now for a word from our sponsors. Hey, y'all, I'm April. Hi, I'm Caroline. And we have a new podcast for you. What's it called, Caroline? Uh, Bloody Happy Hour. It's going to be your new favorite guilty pleasure. We're going to talk about some bloody stuff. Serial killers. True crime. Rapists. <laughs> Rapists. Why not join us? We'll have a good time. You literally never know. I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Bloody happy hour. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of... By the Cover Podcast. <laughs> we cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. <laughs> for sure. For sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. What are we doing here, Rusty? What are we going to do? Uh, yep, we're doing the uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. King of the Hill yes, Rewatch Podcast. Yeah, so we're going to go through one episode at a time. Uh, come along for the ride with us. Come check it out. And, and give me give me a good, um, like, Dale Gribble quote to go out on. Wingo! Yeah, Wingo. <laughs> Wingo. Wingo. All right, well, join us, uh, join us for uh, the uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. In the heart of Texas, that drinks his brew and he spits his chew. Maybe in the heart of Texas, the TV players, but no one cares. Maybe in the heart of Texas. Here we go. And now, back to the episode. All right, and we're back. So we're just talking about the memberships, how to get involved, and how to get your kiddos signed up for summer camp. Um, With that, when we come back from the break, one of the first questions I love to ask is, why do you think it's so important for you to be in Waco right now, and what would you like to see more of in Waco? I do see a growth in a a lot of the creative community here in Waco that uh, collective creative mind is just seems to be expanding like a lot. Yeah. And, but you know, the one thing that I usually encourage, and this is whenever I have had both adults and youth students. And even when we had new members who were uh, a lot of the time, they're not sure what they want to make. Um, you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be an engineer. A lot of the stuff really is just 
learning something new yeah, and then just practicing with it. And so, and like Melissa was saying, you know, there is no failure. It's a lot of trial. It always is trial and error. And so that is something that I would love to see more of is that we express, you know, that drive to even p- people who are wanting to explore their more creative side and just not to, you know, be afraid of that. And, you know, Maker's Edge is, of course, always here to support people who are either experts or novices in any field. I love that. Well, now that I consider myself a Texan, I was told once I was here for 25 years, I could call myself a Texan. I say <clears throat> Wacoan is like a term you have to like own. And Wacoan, like once you call yes, yourself a Wacoan, yes. then you're a Wacoan yeah, too. Actually, I tell people you are a Texan when you start saying y'all. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Because I, I well, then a, I might I had, be a drunk. I had, I had a friend who moved here. I think she lived in California. She said she would never. She told me when we first met, don't ever think I'll ever say y'all. About a couple months later, she said, y'all, and I was like, you said it. <laughs> you're in, you're in. But I've seen a lot of changes in Waco. When we first moved here, there were not a lot of community resources doing engagement just out culturally. Yeah. And there has been a lot of change in that area. You know, the Arts Fest and mm-hmm. the Cultivate 712. And uh, there's just uh, the Art Center. Uh, there's mm-hmm. just a lot of great things that you can do now that do great programming in Waco. Mm-hmm. But... um. I think as far as my husband and I, what we would say is we'd we'd like to see a lot more of the science-based or Mm STEM-based of those activities. You know, the very first year we moved to Waco, my husband and I were crazy. We were crazy. (laughs) We built a 20-foot ditch in our backyard. Oh, my goodness. And coated it in plastic and filled it with water because we participated in the duck races down in Brazos River. Well, I mean, because we're crazy potato heads. We always have been. And But, you know, they quit doing that about... I don't want to 15 years ago now, but uh, I mean, it's things like that. We used to have an annual duck race here in Waco. And what happened to that? Hey, now we have the imagination library duck (laughs) race with rubber duckies. But there is the science fest. There are some great things happening in Waco, but it would be great to expand that in such a way that uh, not just shows kids, but actually gives them opportunities to participate in these activities. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. And it really is like you've been in Waco for such a long time. You've been able to see that shift in dynamic mm-hmm. um, and especially being in the arts in the STEM zone. I feel like there has been a lot of growth, as you mentioned, Julian, with our, um, you know, people in our community, small businesses, mm-hmm. hobbyists, entrepreneurs, artists, creatives, all Absolutely. the people um, looking for these outlets. Um, what would you say is your overall mission and what would you like to get back to the Waco community? Well, uh, that's what we've been focused on for the last nine years. You know, I took a year sabbatical from my work uh, to just focus on the business plan and start up this this business. And it wasn't because we were trying to make money or because we thought we were so smart. It was really just we had a passion to bring to Waco a, a place where you could come and have fun with other people who like to make with their hands. You know, our Our wall says that we are made in the image of a creator. Mm -hmm. We're meant to create. And everything in culture is beating that down. We don't get to do shop in school anymore. You know, I was telling someone, my husband and I met in junior high, mm-hmm. and we did four years of shop together in Aww. high school. And I Romantic mean, <laughs> over there. <laughs> over well, the and it got us slow. out of school on the same days. But uh, for FFA. But, uh, you know, we are very passionate about making on our own. Yeah. We have a joke at my house. Oh, well, my husband will probably kill me. It's called the Rick Factor. Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. We have right engineering at my house, so. It'll cost twice as much, take four times as long, and come out half as good. And yet, we will choose it yeah. every time. <laughs> because there's something valuable in that. And to this day, you know, our kids are now upper 20s, mid-20s. And one of the fondest memories they have is it took us four years to build our house. Mm-hmm. But they think fondly on that. Well, we don't necessarily, <laughs> but they do. <laughs> um, but there's something when you can connect that for a child, that idea that they were made to add to um human capacity around us that we have that innate need inside of us because our creator made us that way and then give them an example 
of how to do it because I don't think they even see that around them anymore. Yeah. And then give them the space and capacity to do it. And that's that is the part that I'm compassionate. I, I'm really passionate that. about. That's amazing. That's a beautiful mission. I love that. And is there anything you'd like to add to that? I, I think she nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that keeps us running. <laughs> uh, well, that's absolutely amazing. And it does sound like this really has been a community initiative of bringing all these people together mm. and creating a space for that creativity um, and for that continuation. Yeah. Um, with that, is there anyone you'd like to shout out that's helped you along this journey? We've had so many people help us along this journey. It, um, I, I, it really has been phenomenal. And it's too bad my husband is not here because he could name them all. He's better with things. <laughs> but Jane Herndon is the one that sat down with me for like a year and helped me really knock out this business plan mm-hmm. and think about, because neither one of us are really business minded, Yeah, but she, she is. And so she really helped us think through that process. And um, First National Bank of, of Mc, McGregor, but now they're here in Waco. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, they have been excellent to us mm-hmm. and um, really excellent. I say they have been excellent to us. I have zero complaints about my banker. Wow. And, um, you know, we, we've Baylor has been very supportive of us. And uh, we've had a lot of people who have come to our space and then um, start a business out of our space mm-hmm. and have now moved beyond us. I love that. And um, so just all of those people then, you know, we, I'd say thank you because they all say that we contributed to that and we're part of that. And that's what makes what we do special for us. Yeah. It's, um, it's really knowing, um, what people take away once they leave us. Cause you know, it's a very transient community. A, A lot of people spend a year or two and then they move on or, um, they become successful enough to supply their own tools or whatever it is leave school and move Mm -hmm. away. Um, But each one has contributed to us in a unique way that we wouldn't have had if they hadn't stepped foot in our door. Oh, I absolutely love that. And that's amazing. Um, And I always say, you know, you also got to shout out your mom, your dog, and your grandma. So Uh, (laughs) none of them live in Texas. Well, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And they'll never see this. That's okay. But yes, our family is actually, both of us come from basically farm families. Yeah. And um, if it weren't for the work ethic and the ideals that our parents had set on us, Mm -hmm. um, we had wouldn't have never reached our (laughs) thirties thinking uh, that, that we could, we could do it and that there was a higher reason for doing it than just owning a business and making money. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Um, And of course, last but not least, of course, plug yourselves um, again, where I can find you, find more information about you, all the things. Well, I think Julia nailed it. The best way to find us because we just moved is to come see us in person down on 12th and Webster at the triple win or to go online. Most of the current stuff that we're doing is on our Facebook or Instagram or our Twitter accounts. Perfect. And, but if you go to Facebook, everything is there. The maker's edge is what we're listed at in those places. So just Google the maker's edge and you will find us and, and, and go to those sites and you'll see what we're doing. One thing that people will notice is when they go, we are, we still go by maker's edge makerspace, but our new space we have now started referring to as maker's edge creation studio. Ooh. It's kind of a, new term that Rick has uh, encouraged us to kind of coin. I love that. So, um, which I, I think that overall, you know, it, it's, it's not quite a full maker. Space, well, I, it, it's a full maker space, but we are shifting the focus of yeah. what we are doing. We are focusing now more on collaboration with mm-hmm. other communities instead of just internally our membership community. I love that. And we're focusing more on commission work and business startup tools, mm-hmm. that sort of thing, and a, and a shift towards classes and workshops instead of independent working in the space. Okay. And so, you know, that's more of a creation studio because it harkens back to really our first picture of the more you have this interdisciplinary outlook and how to make. Uh, the better everyone will be. Wow. I absolutely love that. Um, And with that, is there anything else you want to share with our listeners today? No, but we'd be happy to meet you if you like creating. (laughs) I I would just kind of like to end it off with like, you know, saying we, you know, our our summer camp signups are open. So we please encourage parents uh, to sign their kids up and we hope that they, you know, 
We'll have a, an amazing time during any of our camps. You know, uh, Maker's Edge is open from uh, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays, and then we're closed on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the new features that we have to our space is, uh, since we are a creation zoo, is what we call co-creation. It kind mm-hmm. of delves into a little bit of both autonomy and commission work. You come in with an idea, or if you have an idea in the in progress, mm-hmm. and we work with you uh, on an hourly basis to help you complete to that. help wow. you complete your project. It's really sort of you can just even come in with a goal. Like uh, we had someone come in and say, "My child is graduating. I'd like to make them something Aww. for graduation." And and you know we just ask them some questions. Well, in the end, would you like something sturdy and physical for them mm-hmm. to take, or are you thinking more conceptually of something pretty or <laughs> artsy to take? You know, you start there, and then you help them kind of yeah. come up with a concrete idea of what they'd like to do. And then we have people who will work with them hourly to take their project to completion. Well, I absolutely love that. That sounds like an amazing opportunity for people to get involved. Yeah. Yep. And now I'm like, man, I have so many ideas. Well, there you go. There you go. (laughs) Just come on by. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having us. Um, Thank you again. Um, And again, I'm looking forward to it. And I hope people sign up for all the camps. Go and check out your new location. Yes, absolutely. Go say hi. Go do all the fun things. And if they have a project or are looking forward to maybe making something that they otherwise would not have, um, they have a place here in Waco that they can do that. Yes, they do. Absolutely. All right, amazing. Well, thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Beep, 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 beep. We did it. <laughs> Yay. Wasn't that easy? Yeah. Oh, yes, I, I, easy. I accidentally <laughs> bumped it last time because I was like sitting like this and I kept having to turn my head to look at you guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Okay, we got to fix something. It happens. Here. It happens. We're totally fine. Um, yeah, let me grab Josh and he'll come and take a picture of us. <gasps> Do you guys want to be on my re- Find us everywhere on all social media platforms, K-N-O-W underscore Waco. Check us out at roguemedianetwork.com and we're on YouTube under Rogue Media Network. Check out nowaco.com. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.